You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, we're going to get started with the regular meeting of the Board of Finance, Thursday, March 21st, 2024. And this is a continuance of the budget public hearings for fiscal year 24-25. And before we continue with the departmental presentations, just want to provide a quick overview. Total requests for the budget are $138 million, $163,711, which translates to a net to be raised from taxation of $119,923,000. The budget requests are increased by $7.5 million or 5.8 percent. That tr would translate, if all approved, to a 31.43 mil rate, increase of 1.5 mils or a 5 percent increase. The requests are highlighted by overall town operating budget of 5.8 percent and Board of Ed request is 4.7. Our process is that we will wrap up our public hearing tonight. We will again meet on the 1st of April and recommend a budget to the RTM. They will go through their committee process and, and at their RTM meeting on May 14th, they'll recommend a budget back to us. We will then finalize the revenues and the mill rate. So with that, we will begin tonight with school age child care presentation, page 63. Welcome. Yes, <laughs> Charles and Ed Adriana. Ed Adriana. Okay. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, thank you. It's nice seeing everyone. It's been about a year for some of you with me and Ariana. Um, Thank you for giving us the opportunity to present the fiscal year 25 SAC budget. Uh, my name is Charles Chicarella and I'm the Director of Student Services for the Board of Education. Since fiscal year 21, I've been administratively supporting our Family Resource Center, which is housed at Indian X School. One of the components of our Family Resource Center is a school-age child care. As the name implies, school-age child care provides school-age child care services before school, after school, wrapped around for families of Bradford. Um, Ms. Ariana Loyola has been administering the program for the last two years and has done a really nice job at enhancing the services that have been provided for families and has a good vision for the future. Her current budget addresses the current state of affairs, the fiscal needs of families of Brantford, as well as sets the condition for the out years and future enhancements of the programming offered by School Age Child Care. Um, as a remembrance that School age child care is a fee funded service um, that is paid for by the people who use the service. So it's sort of budget neutral to the town. Uh, with that said, Ariana will present the budget that she has crafted and answer any questions about school age child care. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, so, like Charles said, it is self funded through parent fees. <laughs> Currently, we in, have 142 children enrolled. Um, we have before and after school programs at all three elementary schools and the pre-K wraparound and Indian Neck. This summer, we'll be running a eight week full day summer camp for grades K through four and in Indian Neck, at Indian Neck School, an eight week pre-K summer camp for BPS pre-K students. Some notable changes to the budget, we have added a custodial staff member uh, additional coverage for half time and addition of coverage for half time of two security staff members who will be there during the operating hours of the before and after school program and our program at Indian X School. Some updates 
have been made to Social Security, Medicare, MERS, and coverage of insurance for a full-time SAC employee. We've increased our purchase services workshop line item um, to be able to provide some more workshops and PDs for the SAC staff so we can meet the diverse needs of our BPS students. We've removed credit card processing from the budget. We've increased our utilities to cover proportionate costs, and we've removed the custodial services as that's been added to the personnel. So question. Um, yes. The, you removed the 14,500 for janitorial services? For the custodial services, correct. That is added into the salaries. So now you're gonna have a full-time janitor? Or part -time. custodial person, yeah. part-time? Two part, no, one, one yeah, part time. One, one part time. Okay. And I uh, did notice that you have 58,000 coming from fund balance. Yes. Um, so it's really, it's uh, mostly that's just to balance your budget type of thing. Yeah. What's the balance in the fund, and right now the fund? So, so just. Just so you guys know, um, I don't have the exact fund balance um, on hand, but I do have a breakdown year to year dating back to 2017. And I only used recent history because I don't necessarily want to, um, I don't want to uh, create this, uh, create a plan, or we, or we didn't want to create a plan that would um, uh, be negative every year. Um, we'd run into this issue every year. This is a one year, um, change of system for the for the district in the SAC program. Um, but in recent years, I can point to fiscal year 23, there was a surplus of 100,000. Uh, in 2022, it was 10,000. The 2021 COVID year, that was a negative 30,000. 2020, 2,000. 2019, 112,000. 2018, 73,000. 2017, 96,000. So the balance is in the range of about five to 600,000 altogether um, in the reserve balance. Okay. Um, and again, this is not a plan to to continue to be in a negative. Okay. Um, I, I, to come. I excuse you. We're trying to get hook up our other yep. member, and we've had te technical difficulties. So I think he's on a phone now. So sorry about that. That's okay. Well, so, um, Jim, what do we carry in in fund balance for, for you? Yeah, audit? so ba basically the ledger's on our side, and uh, based on our estimates for 23 Thanks, is about uh, just shy of uh, 800,000. Okay. So the 58,000 is an easy number? Yes. Got it. Okay. That was my, that was my question. Uh, questions from the board on this budget? Um, Victor? I see. You drop the credit card fees, do you still accept yes. credit cards? We do not accept credit cards or ACH payments at the moment. We only accept um, money orders or checks. But as we're hoping to transition um, the SAC fund to the district, they we have a plan to be able to eventually accept ACH and credit cards uh, okay. through payment right. in Thank the near you. future. Okay, uh, questions from RTM members or members of the audience? Okay, I think you're all set. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate your time. Okay. You. Next up is Shoreline Adult Education. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be back again this year. Uh, my name is Christine Bjork, and I am the director of Shoreline Adult Education. Shoreline Adult Education offers both academic programs and enrichment classes, but tonight we're here to talk about our enrichment classes. Um, our enrichment program is self-funded, and this year so far we have offered 162 classes, and 809 community members have participated in fun classes such as ChatGPT and Bob Ross painting, uh, Indian cooking, some of our most popular. For next year, we are requesting a budget of $72,250, which is an increase of $650, which is less than a percent. 
Uh, and this increase includes a raise for our enrichment coordinator. It also addresses the increase in printing costs and postage and uh, the registration fee for the adult ed conference for our enrichment coordinator. And you'll notice there's just a small reduction in the cost of mileage due to um, less traveling between sites. Very good. Questions on this budget? Request 72,250. Questions from the RTM members or members of the audience? Now, Christina, you're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Willoughby Wallace Memorial Library, page 52. Welcome, Alice. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Okay. Hey, I'm Alice Pence from Willoughby Wallace Memorial Library, presenting the budget for this evening. Um, our total budget is 279450 227428 our personnel costs, and non-personnel costs are 52022 um, I don't think there's any um, surprises here um, one thing I did bump up our part-time um, hours a few a little bit because they do like 95% of our program it's um, we have six part-time people and they all are heavily invested in the library program which is programs and services for all ages of the community um, the most of the most of the items are contractual to the, um, the regular wages and salary are union positions and um, in the automation and um, and and other line items and non personnel are lion. We're part of the lion consortium, and those are contractual agreements as because we're part of a consortium. Um, I did bump up the memberships um, and <coughs> conference and meetings because. I thought maybe the new library director might want to go to some more conferences than I did this past year. Um, I just wanted to thank you too, you all, for your support over the years because this is my last presentation to the Board of Finance. Well, congratulations on your retirement. Yeah, and, um, thank you. Good luck on that. Uh, any questions from the board on this budget request? Hmm. Questions? From the RTM members or members of the audience with regards to the Willoughby Wallace request for 279 460 450. 450. Okay, you're all set, Alice. Thank Thanks. you very much. Take care. Thank you all. Next up is James Blackstone Memorial Library. Page 51. Where's the detail on this? Jim, we have a detail in this? Uh, no. Oh. It's online. It's online. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Would you happen to have a copy of the detail? Here we should have gone online for this, but um, we could uh, share with our counterparts here. Three copies. Okay. Have, can we make copies, Joe? That's it. Katie, you can make a couple copies. And actually, Joe, if you don't mind, while we're settling this up, because I felt like I missed an opportunity there and the, moving this meeting along, but I do just want to recognize and thank Alice Pence for her years of service to not only the Willoughby Wallace, but to the town of Brantford, uh, working with her really since I first came in. Um, she has really strived to not only ensure that libraries remain a critical part of our community, but to really raise the, the uh, vibrancy and the importance of the uh, library within the town of Brantford. So thank you, Alice, for your many years of service. Nice. Thanks, Jamie. So if you want to get started, they're making some copies, but if you want to kind of ease into it, um, <laughs> we, I see that you're asking for uh, 
$743,500 from the yes. town, yep. which represents $43,160 increase over, over this current year. Correct. So um, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Well, good evening. Good evening. Um, thank you, Board of Finance members, for having us here um, for this opportunity to present our budget. I'm Katie McNichol, uh, Blackstone Library Director. With me tonight is um, Kathy Oxalita, our business manager, Janice Kochanowski, uh, the library treasurer. And we have a few members of our trustees in the audience tonight. I thank them for their time and coming out tonight. Um, for fiscal 2025, the Blackstone Library's total budgeted expenses are $1,954,420, which is a 2.56% year-over-year increase. Um, consistent with last year, we are requesting 89.2% of the library's operating budget amount from the town in the amount, as you said, of $1,743,500, which is an increase of 43,160 over last year, or 2.54%. Every year, when we prepare our budget, we begin with salaries, benefits, taxes, and health insurance for our employees which, when combined, makes up almost 80% of the total budget and is our largest expense. For fiscal 2025, salaries total $1,046,777 as an, is an increase of $23,699. We follow the town's directive for unaffiliated employees, increasing full-time rates by 2.5% and part-time rates by 2%. Employees, benefits, and insurance decreased by $16,049, reflecting changes in employee enrollment combined with an estimated 10% increase in the cost of health insurance. This decrease allows us to direct the funds to two following areas. One, materials of the collection, which totals $112,000 and reflects an increase of $7,000. The increased amount will help support streaming services and acquiring licenses for digital ebooks and audiobooks to lend, which are increasingly in high demand from the Brantford community, making up about a quarter of the materials borrowed last year and for the last few years. And two, repairs and maintenance, which totals $79,000, reflecting an increase of $17,000. This includes contractual costs for maintaining the library building and grounds and repairs and maintenance for the 127-year-old building. We're at about five years out from one renovation and 30 years from the prior renovation. And the heavily used facilities and equipment are aging. Uh, we need to be prepared to keep things in working order and to maintain our iconic building for the community. <clears throat> the total of all the other expenses reflects appropriate adjustments made in accordance with spending last year and the first six months of this fiscal year. Um, along with the Town of Bra Brantford operating grant, Income is budgeted from the following sources. Program operations total $17,500, a decrease of $3,000. This in reflects income from copier and printing fees and the reality of decreased rental use of the auditorium. Contributions total $64,000, which is an increase of $4,000 and reflects a projected increase in direct appeals and general donations and development and fundraising total $29,000, an increase of $3,500 for projected income from planned events. We are also proposing a withdrawal from the endowment of $92,420, which represents a 2.25% increase over last year, which is in accordance with the commitment by town administration, board of finance, the RTM, and the library to ensure a sustainable endowment. Those are the highlights of the operating budget request. For capital, we're requesting $30,000 for the sinking fund, which was established in fiscal year 22 for capital expenses. The requested amount is contingent upon needs for technology replacement or upgrades <coughs> and building repair. And uses of the sinking fund will be subject to the town's regular oversight procedures. The Blackstone continues to be a vital and heavily used community resource. Programming and attendance have increased along with in-person and online visits. Our meeting rooms and community spaces are in high demand and constantly are in use, along with our grounds, terrace, and outdoor seating. 
Along with our dedicated staff, we appreciate the continued opportunity to make the library a safe and welcoming space for all, and we thank you all very much for hearing our request tonight. Okay, uh, thank you for that um, <coughs> succinct and overview, and the board does have uh, backup detail. Um, I would ask uh, any questions from the board, or you want a few minutes to look over the material, but I think uh, Katie basically covered all of the highlights and the details are in the, the line items particularly. The overall increase is for your budget is 2.5%, 2.56%. Um, so you're up by, in total, 48,694 and uh, requesting from us the 43,160. Uh, Jim, what's the endowment, or I'm sorry, the, the endowment um, balance? Could you tell us a little bit about the endowment um, account? Sure. Uh, as a close of today, it's just over four million, four oh, million one nineteen. So that's uh, so. The plan that uh, Mr. Finch and others helped you with is uh, seems to be working well. And the market. Yeah. And the market. Well, and the, the market. The big thing is and the market. market. And interest rates. Oh, and maybe yeah. in spite of us, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you some credit, Chip. So, um, Bill, that's, that's good. So, um, questions from the board? You're all set? Questions from the board? Questions from RTM members or members of the audience? Okay, you're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Board of Ed, page, page 55, but I think we'll look at the book. Uh, Mr. Muni and uh, members of the board. Good evening. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Peter Burdon. I am the uh, chairman of the uh, Board of Education. I will uh, kick things off and then I will be followed up by uh, Chris. Um, I just want to begin uh, by setting um, uh, kind of the, a little bit of background here. Uh, the foundational elements for this budget, this budget were uh, Invested in our strategic coherence plan. We initiated that process uh, back in uh, 2022. Uh, it was completed um, or partially completed in the spring of 2023. Uh, when we hired uh, Dr. Tramberg and he came on board, he finalized the plan, developing the uh, implementation and action plan for the, for the strategic coherence plan. And that was adopted by the board in uh, 2023. The reason that I uh, mentioned the strategic coherence plan is that plan is what drives the, the budget. Uh, we are trying to uh, develop some coherence between the budget and that, the strategic coherence plan. Uh, we are in a challenging uh, economic environment, as everybody knows. Uh, we've had uh, some uh, grant cliffs with the uh, loss of F ESSER funds, as well as rising costs in general. In the context of the board process, uh, we began our process in terms of our budget on the end of uh, January, uh, beginning of February. Um, our initial budget that was presented to us by the uh, superintendent had a uh, proposed increase of a 4.88% increase. Uh, over a series of a uh, number of weeks and meetings uh, with uh, the superintendent and the administrative team, uh, we were able to make adjustments and refinements uh, to that budget, uh, resulting in a total budget of $65,865,000 for a 4.7% uh, increase, which we are presenting to you tonight. Uh, that budget was adopted and unanimously approved by the Board of Education. Uh, just a couple of ca uh, comments with respect to uh, capital. Uh, you'll notice uh, many of the kind of traditional items in terms of doors and boiler replacements, uh, but you'll also note uh, that there is a proposal to um, provide some capital funding for the uh, CPOP Memorial Tennis uh, Seating Center. Uh, for those of you who may be familiar with the tennis courts over at the high school, there is no ADA accessible seating. There's actually no seating whatsoever. Uh, and this would provide equity uh, and uh, uh, accessibility for all members of the community uh, to be able to watch the uh, tennis matches. 
And so with that, I can uh, turn it over to uh, Dr. Tramper. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's Good evening. Great to be here. My first presentation for you. This is almost one <clears throat> year to the day that I got hired. I got hired on March 22nd of okay. last year. So, and I interviewed in this very room. So this is this is a, a room that I find favorable in, in many ways. Uh, <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> I want to introduce just a couple of people who you might might not have met before. Uh, Brendan Letty is our new director of facilities, and Michael Lopes is our finance manager. Welcome. Uh, and, as you may have noticed, we have uh, a new COO coming on board. Since I've been here, there's also been a new assistant superintendent. We had a new principal at Murphy. Uh, so there's been about a 25% changeover in the administrative team in, in, a, in a very short amount of time. Uh, so I just want to thank everyone that worked to, to bring the budget together. Uh, and I'll start with a, a quick anecdote because I love a good anecdote. So I don't know if this one's good, but here it is. Uh, when I had my first meeting with someone in the room, and I won't say who, uh, they said, whatever you do, just don't name your budget, or please tell me you're not going to name your budget. And there are only <laughs> two things you learn in superintendent school that are concrete. One of them is the, the process for calling a snow day, and the second one is make sure you name your budget so you have a story to tell. But, <laughs> uh, but given, uh, given that advice, this budget is, uh, I went to a quote, so my tradition is I'm going to have a quote for each year. So my quote that I started with uh, with the board is, it's Douglas Engelbart. He's the man that invented the mouse. And his quote is, the better we get at getting better, the faster we will get better. Uh, so everything that uh, is an ask, or as I call them, investments in this budget are all about the strategic improvement and in, in helping us get better. Um, I won't spend too much time orienting you to the book, the book set up as it always has been. Uh, but on page number four, those are uh, the major drivers of, of the increases, and I know that's always a, a point of interest. Um, I'll speak to that a little bit more, but I also want to echo, echo what uh, Peter said about the strategic coherence plan. Uh, the way that I presented the budget to the board was anything that was an ask or new or a look ahead, it's aligned to a specific goal that we have in the strategic coherence plan. Uh, so I believe that that's a, an addendum to the budget mm -hmm. book this year. Yes. Uh, so you can see that work and not just what we're looking for this year, but where we're headed over the next five years. So the ask this year is 65,865,845. And that's a 4.7% increase, which is 2,954,201 over last year. And I also, other numbers I want to give you is student enrollment. So our enrollment this year is 2,541. That's as of December. And that's down 33 students from last year. And as Peter indicated, I would, I would say the biggest challenge that we faced uh, was the Esser Cliff, which we knew was going to happen eventually. Uh, and I'm pretty proud of where we ended up landing, considering we had the Esser Cliff, a new transportation contract, and a very competitive teacher contract. Uh, so I thought I would highlight some of what this budget actually does and delivers for the school district. Uh, and I, I did indicate these in the memo, but I thought it would be helpful to bring them to life a little bit. Uh, and so the first one is the elementary interventionists. Uh, so the elementary interventionist uh, would add uh, an additional interventionist to each of our elementary schools to support students who are having trouble meeting grade level standards and expectations. Uh, what, that, what that means is there are, whether it's literacy or math and sometimes behavioral, uh, there's a teacher that will work with that student and give them extra time on, on that content. This was a net zero expenditure because we did reduce three teachers, classroom teachers, elementary as a result of class size and we accommodated the three interventionists through that process. Uh, I found this to be necessary because currently uh, this process has three tiers, typically tier one, tier two, tier three, and most often teachers, classroom teachers are not providing the interventions at tier two, and by and large in Brantford, the classroom teachers are expected to provide that intervention, uh, which is pro uh, a challenge in the teacher meeting the needs of all of the students in the class, especially students who might need enrichment opportunities. <coughs> Uh, the, uh, a look ahead and a look forward for the several years uh, is the, the learning pathways and the courses we want to offer for high school students. I often say that Brantford is the, it's a perfect size community in so many ways, but it's a very challenging size to be comprehensive and be able to offer all programs for all students. 
Uh, so right now the high school is working with students to really identify what are the interests, looking at data that will uh, provide some understanding of where a job's going to be in the future, and really creating pathways that are gonna set up our students for success in, in those careers. We can't offer all things, but what we do offer, we want it to be the best. Uh, so you'll see some shifts in years to come in how we're providing those offerings. Uh, a big piece of this budget is also about teacher leadership. Uh, and I'm very proud that this budget offers opportunities for teacher leadership, but this is also the place where we found savings in order to make stuff happen. Uh, and that's through the elimination of, the, of six of the coaching positions at the secondary level. So right off the bat, you might say, well, eliminating coaches doesn't sound like teacher leadership, but what that does is it provides us opportunity to have department leads and department liaisons in more content areas across uh, the school system. So we'll have more teachers that have limited release of instructional time, but they're receiving stipends so they can serve on the leadership team and in a leadership capacity while they're also teaching. So that should be an exciting shift that we are making. Uh, security is obviously an important piece of the work that we do. Uh, I presented an executive session to our board, a, a three-tiered system of how we're going to address security improvements. Uh, one was all about the infrastructure and some of the immediate things we've been able to do. Two is looking at our internal staff, which means our security uh, force, our security guards. And three is exploring the possibility of SROs in the future. So right now, this, uh, the plan that we have in the budget is uh, looking at our current security officers that we have. We have a workforce of, is it 18? 18. We have 18 part-time uh, security guards that are working in the schools. The shift that we're making is going to be eight full-time security, so we can have a core team where we can focus the professional development and have consistent people in those places, and then uh, we'll have part-time security for after-school <coughs> events. So that is a, a significant shift that we're making. Uh, there's always a goal to maintain class sizes below the guidelines, which this budget does accomplish. Uh, and there's also, as you've heard through for several years, I would imagine at this meeting is the increased need for uh, services for student mental health and wellness. And we are uh, preserving the middle school ESS program, which provides uh, supports to a, a targeted population of about 30 students who have a significant need. Uh, and we also are adding a social worker to the high school and a psychologist uh, to address these concerns. As far as behavioral support, uh, we talk a lot about how students aren't the same as they used to be, uh, but unfortunately schools look a lot like they always have. So we have some adjustments to make there, but as we're making some of those shifts, this position is a parallel to what we have at the elementary level where a teacher is working to, with uh, a certified person is working with our teachers to provide targeted interventions and supports for students that might have significant behaviors. <laughs> and then a few, I'll end with two things that I am uh, very proud of, and one is the teacher contract. I appreciate the unanimous support of everyone from Board of Finance, Board of Ed. Uh, we also had unanimous support from our teachers union on this as well. Uh, it's exciting because it's a good contract for them, it's a good contract for us, and it also is uh, paving the way for doing some things a little bit differently than we've been able to do them in the past. And one of those things was a, uh, a signing bonus incentive of up to $5,000 for teachers in shortage areas. And the other piece was some flexibility in where teachers are placed uh, when they come in based on years of experience. We didn't get a lot of flexibility there, but we could give them up to a year. That's the biggest barrier we face when we are losing our staff to other towns. Some towns don't have any limitations on that. So we can lose someone and they'll get thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 more uh, just by going next door because they'll give them the top of the scale even though they don't have the experience. So uh, we do appreciate the flexibility that we have. And last but not least, our new transportation contract is uh, exciting. I think it's going to shed a very bright light on the town uh, and uh, it's definitely an innovation and will be the first uh, district in the state to have a fully electrified fleet. Electrified fleet, okay, that came out correct, just wanna make sure. Uh, so those are some of the big highlights for me. Uh, and as I mentioned, these are all aligned to uh, areas in our strategic plan that we are sure we can achieve in the next five years. And I'm glad to take any questions. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Chris. Um, appreciate that. Questions from board members? Um, Jeff. Jeff, go ahead. 
So Chris Lester, um, in the presentations, I don't know if you're here, but I think Peter was, um, and this is regarding security practices, there was a request for new software for security throughout the school system. But one of your biggest complaints from your people was the open doors around the schools. How are we handling that now? Has I there been an improvement? Because that's your biggest point of access. Yeah, I would say there's definitely been an improvement. There's been an improvement just since the start of the year. Uh, another improvement that we have, and it, it's a point of frustration for some, but it's also, it's for safety. We have alerts that can go directly to uh, administrators, to phones, to emails. So there's lots of pings that happen uh, right away. The software is incredible. The Vercata system is uh, among one of the most impressive that I've, that I've ever seen. So it's certainly an amazing investment. Uh, there are a couple of repeat offenders, and we've gotten better at targeting specific people that need to be addressed instead of every, I'm sure every, no matter what your profession is, you get the blanket email from someone that says stop doing this and you don't know if it's you. So we're getting better at uh, addressing where the needs are. So you're deploying your current security people to walk around the buildings and do point checks? Yes, and that's, yeah. everything is mobile, so they have an iPad that goes with them, so they know when any door is open and they can actually, the camera will get triggered and they can see who would be entering or where the door is propped. Thank you. That's good. Uh, on page six of the budget, you have um, increased FTE on other, uh, in increase of two on that. Uh, so a lot of, the, the increase of two is coming out of services that are not certified services, but could be behavior, uh, behavioral supports. And these are uh, positions that migrated out of ESSER that we needed to preserve in the operating budget. So any increases you see there are shifts, are not new positions that we've created. They're just migration out of a grant into the operating budget because that grant's expiring. Uh, now, on security, you mentioned you had 18, but you're going to eight, <coughs> but you're showing 13 here. So the, it's a, that's a compression of the full, we, had eight, we have 18 people, but that, that does not mean it was 18 FTE. No, I understand that. Yeah. But you said you, I thought you said you were going to eight full time. We're going to eight plus part time. So the part time will supplement up to okay. 13. Okay. And the, um, Transportation costs, um, the increase for that, for the new contract, um, that's the 327000 on page 10? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Where are they going to be housed? They're on Flax Mill. Flax Mill Road. Yeah, you might have seen the, the for rent sign has come down off of the facility and they're clearing the back lot. Okay. And uh, I believe last I heard all but five of our current drivers have signed over to Zoom and Charlotte, our yard manager, has already begun. Let's go over. Yeah. Okay. When does it take effect, Chris? July 1. In other grants that you might, um, I didn't see it. I saw a list of some of them, but uh, where is that again? The grants are on 23 24 do you expect those similar grants for the next year yes all of these um, I don't see any of these falling off next year uh, the place where we hold our breath a little bit these tend not to go down but sometimes they don't go up and when we have salaries of employees in there their salaries are going up so that's the only conundrum we have on occasion with these gotcha <clears throat> Jim, did you have a question? Yeah, just a quick question. In uh, the 22 audit, you guys turned back about 213,000. And, uh, you know, I know that uh, some of the impact uh, in a positive way of the MERS changes, which is reflected in this budget, 
Uh, obviously, it's probably impacting in a positive way, hopefully, the, uh, the current year that we're in. And I was wondering if you had a sense as to where you might uh, fall uh, uh, at the end of this year. In other words, do you, do you see uh, you guys turning back uh, uh, potentially any money? It's a little bit early uh, to, to say that with the MERS and uh, we actually closed spending for the buildings a week from Friday. And that's a big, that we, there's a big change that happens then where we kind of see what's happening there and we can close out encumbrances. Uh, but given what we know now, uh, we're probably in the ballpark of 500,000 given the MERS and some unfilled positions we've had with staffing. Okay, that's helpful to, to understand that. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Jim. Other questions from the board? Well, this is Chris's first appearance here. We need to have some good questions for him. <laughs> I'm sure DRTM will have theirs. But I just watched uh, before I came here last year's presentation, and I saw there was a lot of use of the word smoothing, and to make sure Jim was telling Don to like make sure Chris knows about smoothing, right, and that right, happened right. like five times in the meeting. So yes, yeah. he he did relay this this smoothing. So he got some advice coming in here. Yeah. Uh, questions from RTM members. Sir, uh, just, just uh, could you come up to the uh, mic, please? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Over here. Yes. And we know who you are, but if you identify yourself. Hi, I'm Josh Brooks, RTM Second District Education Committee. Uh, the ESSER funds, what's the exact amount that we lost on that? Do, or uh, guess. I have the book at home, but. Based on the total amount or what was left this year? To what, what, from last, year, last year's budget to this. To we had about two, close to two million. So we, we had two million last year mm -hmm. that we don't have anymore. Correct. Are there any uh, services that one would categorize as vital? or uh, especially services that may have benefited youth that could use benefiting that we will be losing as a result of no longer having ESSER funds. I think we were able to preserve the most important pieces and one of those was ESS. We had, that program was for the middle school and the high school. Uh, we are not continuing with the high school, but we are putting uh, an additional social worker there in place of the, the people that were there providing that program. So I think that we're okay with that. And the other piece that was a huge driver, uh, it's vital, but I know it's not exciting, is substitute teachers. So a very large substitute teacher expense, uh, several hundred thousand dollars, was living in that grant that is essential because when teachers are not here, we have to have subs. I recall that. Yeah. Okay, so can I make a comment? Or Sure. Uh, so um, while, while the, the 4.7 seems to be um, not ideal, I'm going to say that, uh, we, we, you know, we kind of knew this was going to be the case because of ESSER. I mean, I had this, I remember having this conversation with the superintendent at the time. So I'm hoping that the 4.7 remains intact. Thank you. Uh, other questions from RTM members or the audience? Sir? let us know we have your name again. Good evening. Greg Gerolman here. Um, I wanted to uh, I wanted to speak um, in favor of the 4.7 percent along with additional funds. Um, so basically you know what I've provided to each member of the committee is you know 
first of all, we're, we're talking about a budget of 4.7%. Um, number one is, how would that compare with other DERGs, okay, other districts in our same DERG, which is DERG D. A DERG is a district requirement group. It's how the Connecticut State Department of Education categorizes various districts based on size and demographics, et cetera, et cetera. Retail does the same thing, based on size of stores, based on the demographics of the people that they, um, you know, that they tend to have as their core customers. It's the same kind of thing. And when you look at, and I did this manually, unfortunately there was no, um, uh, no one repository of information to look at this. I went to all of the websites and, you know, so you look at all of them, some are closer, some of these districts are closer, some of them are further away. And the average is 5.679%. So let's call that about 5.7%. Now, <clears throat> you know, it would seem to me, take a step back. Dr. Tramberg has been here about nine months. Now, honestly, and I mean no disrespect to Dr. Tramberg, but I envisioned myself coming here tonight, um, seeing a lot of the same things happening the same way with mostly the same people, the same budget process, the same prevent defense, if you will, and saying, you know, let's cut the budget, let's give zero, all right? I was prepared to do that, and I've done that before, because we did not have, um, as I've been saying for a lot of years, um, I did not believe that we had leadership that exceeded expectations. You look at what Dr. Tranberg has done, what he hasn't done, um, and how he's done it, in nine months, and you could arguably say that he's done more in nine months than previous leadership has done in nine years. Um, you look at the quality of the people that are coming in, you look at the people, again, generally speaking, you look at the people that are going out, you look at what's happening. One of the first things he did was fix one of the biggest hypocrisies probably, of this, of anything having to do with the district. And that is that they had police at Board of Ed meetings, but yet they could have police and give them five hours minimum a time and a half to make Board of Ed meetings supposedly safer for Board of Ed members, but yet police in the schools, no, we can't have that because of um, getting out of control. You look at the quality of the people that are coming in, people with a background with Greenwich public school system, Westport public school system. In other words, some of the best districts in the state, of which there are 167 districts in the state. Recently, I saw an article about the five most admired districts in the state. And it was Greenwich, it was Westport, it was Darien, it was Ridgefield, and another one that I can't remember. And I can honestly say that, wow, we have people from executive leaders now from three of those five schools. And what I'm saying is, is that having a new leader and doing the right things and showing what's happening that takes money put toward the district and makes it an investment as opposed to a cost. And as such, I'm asking for something that, you know, we have a district in sorely in need. Dr. Tranberg was hired in a turnaround situation to raise the bar. He wasn't hired to run in place and run a prevent defense. And, and what I'm saying is now, 
I've had to readjust my thinking as somebody who's the, you know, the voice of cut, give zero, et cetera, et cetera. And what I'm respectfully suggesting is that this also um, take place with the Board of Finance and the Board of Ed. The Board of Ed, 4.7%, that's a budget that is probably not unlike what we would have if the previous superintendent was still here. Um, I'm advocating for an extra 1% just to get us, I mean, we should be at the average of our dirt easily um, without any question. I mean, that's just table stakes if the goal truly is to raise the perception and raise the standing of this district. On the other hand, if it's not, then doing the exact same things, mostly the exact same way, that'll work. But I think now, you know, when you look at that, you know, to me, this 60-page report by Bob Ferguson, this is the North Star. This is, this is the guiding light. This is the thing that really dug deep into what the district is and what the district isn't. And, you know, what it says is, is that a lot of people like living in Brantford. A lot of people like a lot of things. The biggest issue that they have is the district, right? So we need to do something different. And now that we have somebody that not only is, you know, not only is talking a great game, but actually delivering, giving them more money with which to do it will bring upon investments at a more uh, accelerated rate. An accelerated rate that is needed and necessary because we've been running in place for quite a while. I've outlined, well, first of all, Dr. Tranberg has outlined six things that he proposed, I believe, as potential investment opportunities or near-term investment, something to that effect. Along the way, I changed that to nice-to-haves because I believe that Dr. Tranberg is trying to be diplomatic as a new guy in town, and he's trying to say, hey, look, I don't want to come off as a bull in a china shop. I want to be flexible, et cetera, et cetera, and, and honestly, I understand that. I might do the same thing. You might do the same thing if you were in his situation. Um, so I took that as, hey, this is a really nice to have. In so many words, he's saying, hey, this is something that we could use, but I'm not going to ask for it. Okay? I'm asking for it. Second thing is, is that I respected and acknowledged the way he did that so much that I reciprocated with several things of my own. Um, I mean, you look at the low-hanging fruit here, and we have a great opportunity to, um, we have a great opportunity to kind of raise the bar in an area that is unquestionably the greatest um, barrier the greatest challenge in this town is the perception of the district. I mean, my compliments to people, especially these gentlemen, that have exceeded expectations vastly in, other, in things non-district related. And I mean, and that, and that report bears it out. But we have an opportunity to do something different and, you know, and, and, and I think we need to seize the opportunity. The timing is right. Plus, on top of that, so what I'm advocating for is 1% to bring us up to um, at least shooting par with the other dirts. And an additional 2% on top of that to, to say, hey, look, Dr. Tramberg, you've shown in your nine months here that you've, you're delivering, we want you to deliver a little crisper, a little faster, because you're capable of it, right? 
I mean, so I'm advocating for 3%. Thanks, Greg. Can you um, um... And also, lastly, um, you know, I could also mention something that, you know, some of this can be self-funding, partially self-funding. If you would like to hear it, I will tell you, okay? Um, something within the world of, um, it's within the world of technology. Um, I think from a technology perspective, and if you notice, one of the things that I've mentioned is um, bringing in a different layer of leadership in technology, a different layer of leadership in human resources, be it somebody that's promoted from within or from the outside. And on the other hand, if we're not going to do it from a technology perspective, we could outsource this to the top. My understanding from a conversation with Mr. Ingraham a number of years ago is that, Mr. Finch, I believe we talked about this as well, there's only one aspect of this town, as I understand it, that has their own separate kind of IT department, and that is a small segment of finance. Everything else is a shared service from the town. Right now, the district is spending close to 3% on IT, and it's, the delivery is not exceeding expectations. So my point is, is that this is the worst of all worlds, is that we're, we're putting 3% into something, not getting the return. So if that's how it's ultimately judged to go, let's outsource it to the town. On the other hand, if it's not, Let's bring in a, you know, let's bring in a upgraded layer of executive and make technology more of a competitive weapon as opposed to unnecessary evil. Um, by the way, they aren't here, but um, I have the support. They've seen these documents, and I have the support of Bob Ferguson, the executive recruiter. Um, who is a Brantford resident who wrote that report, okay, of Tom Keefe, who is the RTM education chair, and also Dave Grundell, who is also the, um, who's also one of the leaders of the teachers union. They share the fact that we need something that thinks outside the box as a solution to accelerate things in terms of bringing increased district standing better safety, more offerings, and just an overall perspective of, you know, consistently raising the bar in each and every way that the district can raise it. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Ma'am, Tracy, you want to come up? May I ask a question on capital, or is that... Yes. Well, we're, we're going to, actually, we're going to get the capital. Okay. So for now, uh, questions, well, let's deal with the operating piece of it. John, you have a question? You want to come up to the podium? Uh, John Hartwell, RTM District 5. Um, so I noticed that um, the decline in enrollment at the lower schools, uh, 39 students you're expecting, and then a similar decline at the high school with a bump up in the middle school, and that's on a one-year basis, um, nearly 60 students down in total for the year. Do you have a five-year projection? Have you um, engaged with the professionals and done a projection in terms of enrollment over, those, or, over the near term? And, what does that show us? We do. We have, there was a uh, outside enrollment study done in 2020 uh, that has enrollment projected at about 100 students down from where we are right now by 2030. Uh, however, having looked at many enrollment and demography studies, there's some, some things that I found problematic. I don't think it was comprehensive. Uh, and this is dipping into capital a little bit. When we look at 
the potential for a master facilities plan, we do need a new demography study. Uh, so that will hopefully happen next year. I would point out that a study done in 2020 when the um, pandemic was going on and the, the um, massive hit that housing has taken and all that time, people moving around, people moving in and out, and just wondering where we stand. And so you're, you're planning for a study. Yes, that was one of my concerns with the timing. Of the okay, great. Um, all right. Uh, and do you have any idea in, because the gentleman mentioned the, the Dergs, do you know where some of your compatriot, uh, well, actually, I'm less concerned about the Dergs in general because some of those are inland, but here along the coast, um, communities that might be more comparable to us uh, in terms of people coming in, people going out, have you any idea where they're headed? You know, we have a we talk about this all the time. I'm Where sure. are you with your budget? It's a very common superintendent question. Yep. Uh, everyone is a bit higher this year than they've been in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the big drivers of that is uh, teacher contracts are higher. All of the settlements have been an average of uh, in the 12s, and that is not what those three-year agreements used to be. Uh, so that's been a big driver. And costs are just up in general with equipment, with supplies. So we're looking at this, uh, someone said the other day that, that five is the new three, and that's, yeah, that seems to be what it is. And, and one last question, if I might. Um, Magnus School, uh, those that we're fiscally responsible for has increased from five to 15. Do you see that uh, as a trend? Where are those people going? What, is, what are the programs that are attracting them, and is there something that we're missing in our own school system that would in fact keep those students here so that the taxes their parents are paying would actually come into what we are providing. Yes, I'm, I'm hoping that we can disrupt any desire for students to want to go to other magnet schools uh, by creating some more, I don't want to say more comprehensive programs, but specialized mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. at the high school. Mm -hmm. So this idea of what are we going to be the best at, we can't be the best at everything, but let's find what those things are and make them attractive enough that students want to stay. And do you have any ideas about where that might be? I understand that this is your, something you'll be working on. It's a bit preliminary right now. There's definitely an uh, increased need for uh, STEM offerings at the high school. Mm -hmm. That's been clear. Uh, we have a strong culinary program at the high school, and that's been an area of interest that um, might potentially expand as well, and business has come back as an area of interest. And we have a wealth of resources in this community that we have not tapped into yet as partners, uh, so I think there's a lot of opportunity ahead. How about vocational? Um, vocationally, there hasn't, that hasn't popped, but I haven't talked to Mr. Panagoulias yet to know the, this is preliminary, this is, not, this is secondhand, what, I, what I'm sharing. Because we know not everybody goes on to college. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, sure. <clears throat> Other questions from the audience on the operating? Jim O'Connor, uh, principal at Tisco Elementary, also uh, president of the Brantford Administration or, Organization. First, I just want to say thank you to everyone here. Um, so you know, everyone hasn't left and everyone isn't leaving. So some of us administrators are still around, 75% of us are still here. But so there, I want everybody to know also there has been a great bridge. I've been reinvigorated with Dr. Tramberg and the team he's brought. It's energized me. Most of you know, I love your children. I love the community. Uh, obviously, we need the resources, but COVID was difficult in the schools and in our community, in our town. I think this is a fair budget, but those wants that Mr. Jerome talked about are going to be needs as we go in the next five years. Mental health, supports, pupil personnel that Dr. You know Charles Ciccarelli works on, they really are keeping costs down. And I think Mr. Finch and Mr. Cosgrove, we are one of the most fiscally responsible towns and I appreciate the volunteerism that you guys do. It helps our children. But we're gonna, we're gonna do some instructional gaps. We're gonna move these children along. And it wasn't one or the other. 
The bridge is here. The strategic success plan is on the table. It's being accounted for. Like Mr. Verdun has done is he's brought his Board of Ed team together, and Dr. Tramberg is bringing his administration team. You can have faith in us that we're going to support the children and that these dollars are going to be well spent. So I thank you for your time. Thank you. Other questions or comments on the operating budget for Board of Ed? Now we'll move on to capital requests. I'm showing those on page 50, 55 of your budget yes, and, book. And the breakdown is it's on C1. Sure. C1, you want to go to C1? Mm -hmm. Bright green is kind of hard to see. I think you're yeah, trying so to hide the debt. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that, is that for Finch's benefit? <laughs> Uh, so most of the first section on equipment and services is connected to uh, technology, uh, which I, I would say we very much appreciate that this is where uh, the technology budget lives in, in the district. Uh, so that first line, the school technology, is uh, really about the classroom needs on any given year. Uh, one of the big needs that we have is it's this ongoing replacement of the panels, the LCD panels. Uh, that's a regular maintenance issue. Uh, the next two lines regarding the leases of the teacher laptops and student devices, uh, those are on a cycle, and this just continues the process for that cycle. Uh, the same with the PK-1 devices as well. Uh, office admin computers are, as it states, this is just a, an ongoing cycle to go by uh, location and do those replacements. Uh, the integrated security, last year that was a $540,000 expenditure. Uh, in FY27, you'll see the $220,000, which would be the renewal of that software at that time. Uh, the security cameras and equipment are also ongoing replacements and improvements, and we have a large wireless access uh, points upgrade in fiscal year 27. Uh, I'm going to skip the next two lines because uh, there's one more piece I'd like to speak to before I turn it over to Mr. Letty to talk about some of the the built more building based and, and facilities related requests. Um, the system wide facilities master plan, uh, it's not only a demography study, it's working with an architect to not just look at some of the campuses that there's been concern about. I do know that last last year, Sliney, uh, there was a feasibility study for Sliney that was presented to the board. And a couple of years before that, there was a feasibility study, study on the Indian Neck campus that seemed to not really have surfaced. Uh, long story short, both of those studies uh, indicate that those campuses are at their end of life and new construction is the best path forward. Uh, but those campuses were looked at in isolation, not looking at the whole district and what the future is uh, for all of the schools. So this study would take a look at not only Sliney and Indian Neck, but also Murphy and Tisco to give us some options about what might be the best path forward that is not only cost effective, but will give us the, the highest return on the investment for the students. Uh, so that might mean things like, do we need Indian Neck and Sliney to have new construction, or is there a possibility for new construction that would uh, take the place of both of those buildings? Um, is there a way to look at some of the existing campuses that we have, like Tisco and Murphy, and say, is there, can we do a significant renovation on both of those campuses? Uh, and uh, not need those other two spaces as well. So the idea of this plan is to give us options so we can make a thoughtful plan for the future and not just react to a concern that we have about a particular school. Sliney is very much near uh, the end of its life, so you might have some questions of, okay, if it's end of its life, why are we asking for $400,000 in a year or two uh, for the boiler? Once we have the results of that study, I think we'll definitely need to reevaluate the capital plan in general uh, so we have a better idea. But without that, that's what this uh, capital plan is projecting. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Brendan for some highlights. Thank you. Uh, just some, some quick highlights here. One of the major highlights is uh, the roof replacement at the high school. Uh, the roof is in dire need of replacement. Um, there are several sections of the roof that are at the end of life or at complete total failure. Uh, we are looking towards some energy performance contracts and services that can leverage some other opportunities to help offset some of those costs. Um, as you 
head down the list here, um, you know, some of these are, are regular maintenance uh, furniture at uh, both Murphy and Tisco, uh, as well as a new playground at Tisco. Um, some of that is, is the, the aging equipment and not also not uh, as ADA compliant as uh, we could be. Um, further down the list, um, Mr. Berdan pointed to the CPOT tennis court seating as well as the athletic storage building. Uh, currently we have uh, a great need to um, house some of our athletic storage and athletic equipment. We, we currently use the uh, storage trailers and um, those are just not a uh, good use of storage. Uh, they, are, they provide no ventilation. Um, the location of where they are, we have a lot of rodents and vermin that, that get in and, and quite commonly eat and destroy and make some homes of our athletic storage uh, <coughs> equipment. So uh, upgrading those facilities with some more um, uh, sturdy quality uh, buildings there would, would help to uh, salvage some of that equipment that we have there. Um, the rest is, is um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, seal coating uh, or pothole repair at some of uh, our elementary schools and then sidewalk repair and masonry repointing uh, just to, to keep some of those uh, in shape. Okay, thanks Brendan. Questions from the board on the capital uh, items, capital request? So Brendan on the, um, excuse me Joe, sure, on the um, storage building, that's out in 2526. Yep, yeah, so 2526, that's, that's in, it, it, a major part of that is for the Walsh Fields, um, and dependent on what the plan is there, we are we are in the beginning phases of, of seeing what those plans are as far as what type of storage facility or what type of storage facility need we will need <coughs> to house all of the equipment and, and things that are on those Walsh Fields. And storage was not part of that plan. Yeah, I was going to say, that wasn't incorporated in that, in that authorization? It was it not. The, it was not. Our under, the, how did it get forgotten? It wasn't forgotten at the time. It was believed to not be needed, and that's not our assessment. Was it needed? Yes. Okay. Jamie? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> the plan inc uh, includes a uh, essentially a structural pad, um, which we would bring in. The plan at the time was to bring in uh, storage containers, either leased or, or bought, uh, that would sit on that pad, that concrete pad. Uh, this came after discussion with um, with the uh, district, you know, with let's just say some of the 25 percent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. Other questions, uh, Jeff? Or? Yeah, and the four million on the roof is that the entire school? That's the entire roof. Yes, we had a um, we had some um, testing done and, and uh, a pretty uh, intense report that provided uh, you know a clear picture of, of where we are in certain sections of the roof. The, se the roof can be broken down into several sections, and as I said, most of them are at either end of life or at total failure. Because there's an older part of the building, and of course the newer part. Of Correct. The shirts. Yes. How old is the newer part now? Uh, 25? How many? 23. 23? Yeah, at least. Yeah. Thank you. Victor? So um, regarding that roof renovation, I assume mm. you're, you're looking at uh, increased uh, insulation. Is that what you're, you're saving money on energy as well? Is that? Yeah, we're looking to, to leverage some of the costs uh, through um, some energy performance contract, whether it be windows, solar, um, some opportunities there. We're, we are engaged with a partner now to kind of further those discussions. Okay, thank you. Would there be any um, grants from the state or anything if we were to, to make it more energy efficient? That's part of this energy performance contract. <coughs> okay. Questions, Tracy? <coughs> It, the part of the discussion also involved uh, leftover bonding. Um, and Mr. Finch had mentioned that there's about $2 million in leftover bonding from the Walsh School um, 
job or construction. So hopefully um, that can be folded back into possibly offsetting the cost of the high school roof or some other source. Well, well I mean, the all schools. the dollars are. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I mean, all the dollars are essentially fungible. And I think that folks were typically asking about Wall specifically. My guess is is because the athletic complex was at Wall, and uh, but I'm not exactly sure 100 percent where we are with, with, with the closeout. I know that uh, uh, there's been some change orders submitted to the school facilities unit, uh, and again, this is something that, that as JB said, the other 25 percent was dealing with through through Colliers, uh, but uh, Colliers being the owner for, for that project. But, but we are anxiously awaiting to see what, uh, what the cash left over in that will be. Um, and you may recall uh, back in January, we were talking about uh, the town's overall financial plan and how do we finance, you know, the, the school piece that we had was basically an estimate of the roof and windows. Uh, there was a paragraph in there that spoke about, you know, it doesn't include anything that could come out of the uh, Board of Ed's facility study, and at that point we'd have to update the plan. But yeah, we did mention uh, in that that possibly re reallocating bond proceeds could be a, a tool in addition to selling property and other things to help offset some of the capital plan. So it, it is on our radar. And, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, that we do in Brantford is we don't necessarily simultaneously authorize the debt and uh, sell it at the same time. So uh, that does give us some, some flexibility. Um, so. We are hopeful that uh, you know we will use that to uh, as an offset to any of our borrowing costs, and I think uh, I think it makes sense to kind of keep it, you know, at least just speaking for myself, obviously, is to keep it. Uh, you know, if it, if it was left over for the board of ed, and the board of ed has other needs, it probably would be a logical place to keep it for a board of ed project. And, and then if you look at it, well, what facility did you finance? It was the Walsh Intermediate School, so for the Walsh Athletics. Uh, it probably makes uh, sense. And I see Marianne Amore, I think, is in the audience. And, you know, one of the things that uh, I distinctly remember uh, her saying when that uh, Walsh appropriation was before a joint committee is, you know, is this going to be used as a community asset? And that was a very important uh, criteria, I think, in her vote. And so, and in a way, you know, the proceeds from that are being now invested into the facility which is being used, obviously, as a community asset. So you had folks from the Board of Ed speaking in favor of it. There's that end of the community. Uh, and then there's the uh, leagues and other folks. Uh, and I think, uh, I think they presented a good plan. It was a bipartisan uh, effort. It was approved by unanimously, I believe, right? Yes. So, so the answer is maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if, I I was, if, I was, if I was ruling the world, I would, I would use it. For the I, I think it's a, probably a good use going yeah. forward. So. I, think I, I would advocate for a storage building instead of trailers. Thank you. I, that's Any other idea. questions on the uh, capital? No. Okay. Questions? John? John Hartwell, RTM5. Um, in terms of looking at the buildings, I think it's a very interesting idea to, we know that Sliney is a, is a concern. Um, this is the first time that I've heard that you might throw in <coughs> other three buildings and take a comprehensive look. I think that's a terrific idea. Uh, my question is sort of, how long do you think that will take? Um, when do you expect to be able to come forward with some sort of comprehensive plan that would uh, give us some idea of where we might be two, three, four, five years out. Because I notice in the capital plan there's some money in there, not this year, for next year, um, for Sliney. Obviously, uh, if we have to do that, we would have to do that. But the question is, what's the overall look? Uh, best case scenario for me is, uh, well, the, the, shortly after this time next year, we'll at least have the plan. Uh, from the architect, and I'm thinking more, there will be some large asks, so I think it's more looking at a 10-year, not at just five years, mm -hmm. and based on the studies I've seen so far, uh, Sliney would definitely be the priority. Right. 
would urge you to be back by this time next year with something concrete so that when we're in budget process again that we have something more to to you yes, know. I'll, I'll certainly do what I can. It's, I'm sure you will. They're not the most responsive. They're, they're little, the architects are busy right now, so just having preliminary conversations has been Good. has been tough. But I think there would be lots of interest in a project of this the scale and scope. I think I, I would think so too. All right, thank you very much. Sure. Other questions from the audience, RTM members, on the Capitol for Board, board of Ed? Uh, okay, I think we're all set. Um, thank you for your presentations. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So that concludes our public hearings for the 24-25 budget. We've covered everything, Jim and Catherine. Jim? Yeah, we just got our budget. Yes, yeah, so, um, so I would, I don't, we should probably, probably take a vote to close the public hearing just for. for I'll, move to, I'll move to close the public move hearing. To close the public hearing. Second. Seconded by Harry. Uh, Charlie, you heard us. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So. We're good on that. We're going to move to item number three on the agenda, which is the fiscal year 24-25 American Rescue Plan Act, the ARPA recommendations. Uh, Jim, you provided us with some information, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but I think uh, actually the, uh, the first thing I, I, I want to say is that uh, as in other years, uh, the amount that's being requested is uh, is just about everything that you. Should I go up there? The mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. Yeah. So basically, everything that uh, you yeah, know was uh, in 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 the request before you is uh, items that you heard throughout. And again, I, I know this sounds like a broken record. This is you know essentially our third year of doing this. Uh, we filed for the uh, the standard option, so that lets us fund basically what's defined as government services. Uh, we basically in the past have integrated this into our uh, capital and operating budgets. Uh, the request before you, you've heard before, with the exception of one that Jamie is going to present uh, tonight, and that is for a, uh, and I think all of you guys have, have seen this, uh, and that's for a, uh, a study of the traffic signals. And so I'll let the. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Jamie. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> The town engineer, um, I believe you, you received the letter. Um, as many of you know, we recently had a light on Leeds Island Road malfunction for quite some time. Uh, you know, and it was down um, for such a long time, primarily due to all the troubleshooting that needed to take place and Eversource needed to be involved in part of the shutdown and uh, evaluation as well to repair that light as well as our um, contractor, traffic light contractor. From there, the uh, public works uh, director uh, met with engineering, had a discussion. Um, as you know, they've been working uh, closely with the, the departments have been working with, uh, closely with each other the last few years, discussed the issues of our traffic signals throughout town, and they determined it may be time to do an evaluation uh, of all of our town-owned traffic lights. Now, um, so, the town engineer worked closely with Beta Engineering, who's familiar with our town, um, and they were also a firm that's been selected through our uh, Council of Governments. Um, as a contractor, he secured a proposal from them. We're asking for the first phase of the proposal in the amount of $31,500. This will look at uh, it'll be evaluation of not only the controls, the systems, um, everything with the around the traffic light um, so it's three locations continuation of Leeds Island Road at East Industrial and Business Park Drive Leeds Island Road at the stop and shop driveway plaza that's a town owned light and the Maple Street at Indian Neck uh, Avenue uh, the one on the two on Main Street will be addressed as part of the Main Street project so we're not asking beta to take a look at that we're, we're doing that uh, as I said, as part of the, the Main Street project. Uh, they're all at least, you know, probably 20 to 30 years old. Um, a lot of the uh, 
uh, systems of, you know, are at a point uh, where the equipment is becoming obsolete or more difficult to find, um, as well as you no may notice a lot of times when we're doing a paving, um, you know, they have to come back in and put the traffic loops in. Those are the sensors in the road. Uh, we may look at changing these over to the optical and this way avoiding cutting into the pavement, uh, which also become problematic when we're trying to do road maintenance, uh, going with the gotcha. optical sensor. So they'll look at this, develop a, uh, an assessment of those, and depending on the, the report that comes, we may uh, come and ask for funding for further design and, uh, and uh, replacement uh, uh, appropriation for the uh, construction. Okay, thanks, Jamie. Questions on this request for ARPA? One second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there additional discussion? Charlie, can you hear us? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jamie and Ed. Uh, with no other business to come before the board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Of course, it's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.